Today we're gonna learn how to create an album template in Photoshop, whether that's a wedding album, a family album, or even your portfolio. And this is gonna save you so much time that once you create that album template, all you have to do, just drag and drop your photos and you're good to go. And we're gonna use the very simple concept of clipping masks. It's super easy, so without any further ado, let's get started. So before we jump into Photoshop, we need to first determine the dimensions of the album that we are printing, right? How big the album is, what are the dimensions, what's the aspect ratio, right? It's simple, just complex terms. So first off, all you have to do, go to File, New. Now, in this case today, we are printing two sides at once, okay? So we would go to File, New, and then whatever size that is, a dialog box will appear. And once a dialog box appears, New Document dialog box, and then it will ask you, what size do you want? So choose print just and you can see the size, uh, the presets that are already available. But suppose you want to print square album, right? And your dimension is say 12 inch by 12 inch. So just dial that in. So it would be 12 inch by 12 inch. Now, here's the catch. Since we are printing two sides at once and we are designing two sides at once that will open up like that. So uh, suppose this is the album and you'll design the cover separately, the back cover separately. So when you open the album, it's just like this. So you need to design these two pages all together, right? So instead of the width being 12, you need to double it up. So what's the double of 12? 24, right? Once you double that up, it's all right. Make sure the orientation is landscape and color mode you can choose CMYK of course, if you're printing, but I'm going to choose RGB because I'm going to show you in the screen. So you can choose CMYK and 8 bit is fine. White is fine. Let's create it. Okay. Let's name it something simple design. Okay. Now, why to name it? Well, I personally used to think this is not important, but when you go ahead to file export, you already get that option, right? To retype and rename the file, rename from untitled. But here's the thing. If you name it right now, Every time when you export it, this name will come as a default and this will save you time, especially if you're exporting multiple times, right? And you will be doing that if you're into the photography business. You want to export it for the web, export it for, say, print, right? So name it right now, whatever the album name is. Okay, let's go ahead and create it. Okay, that looks fine. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is like that. Now it's time for us to draw the grids, okay? First off, make sure you go to views and snap is checked, okay? Once snap is checked, then you're ready to draw the grids. So let's draw a grid, drag it from the left and put it in the center. If you cannot see the ruler, press the shortcut Control or Command R, R for ruler. So Control or Command R, this hides the ruler, press that again, Control or Command R, this brings back the ruler. So click and drag from the ruler, and it will just snap in the center. Okay, done. Now we need to draw the margins. How do we do that? Go to view and then new guide layout. Okay, so you can save a lot of presets if you want. And I have this already, I have this margin already. So make sure columns and rows is not checked because you don't want that. And you could have created this lines with columns and rows, but let's make sure this is unchecked and make sure margins is checked and make sure these two are unchecked clear existing guides. We don't want to clear this guide, right? This is unchecked clear columns. We don't want to clear that columns. So you can choose whatever margins you want, 100 pixels from the top or 150 pixels, whatever you want. So make sure all of them are the same. I'll choose 150 for bottom and right as well. Now, once you choose, click OK. Now make sure whatever design you make, it doesn't go out of this. This is just a safety line. Think of it as a bleeding line. If you're into printing, you'll understand this. Okay, now let's start creating our design. So first of all, let's do some random design. Let's make this page a little bit greenish. So let's create a rectangle and maybe we can probably fill it with green. Okay, so first let's fill it with green. Create a new solid color adjustment layer. Click on this adjustment layers icon and choose solid color. Choose whatever color you want. I'm going to choose maybe this color. I like this color. Click OK if you're satisfied. And I just want the left page to be of this color. Remember, this is two page setup. 
this is not just one page this is two page and this is the dividing line now once the printer prints it like this it, it's going to fold it and staple it from the middle right you get the idea and bind it from the middle now we want only this page to be color and this page we can mask it out really simple so select the rectangular marquee tool right click on it and click on rectangular marquee tool if you cannot see it select that and select this area see how nicely it snaps to the middle right why does it snap because we checked snapping when we went to view we checked snapping now once you select that click on the mask button and fill it up with black okay so press d for donkey to reset the swatches and then press x and make sure the foreground color is black now fill this area with black you can fill it by pressing alt backspace okay option delete if you are using a mac now press Control or command d to get rid of the marching ants now our basic design is ready anytime you want to clear the guides just hide the guides you can press Control and colon right shortcut is on the screen Control and colon again to bring it back really simple right if you want to bring out the grids Control and apostrophe Control and apostrophe again right if you're using a mac that would be command right command and colon command and apostrophe okay so this design looks amazing now we want to create placements for the photos so to create the placements let's use simple gray rectangles so we're going to choose the rectangle tool and then draw a rectangle simple right but you cannot draw any rectangle you have to make sure that you maintain the aspect ratio so what's the aspect ratio of your image right most cameras use 3 is to 2 aspect ratio you can always change it crop it do whatever you want but if you want an aspect ratio to be maintained you can use the aspect ratio of your camera in most cases which is 3 is to 2 now why 3 is to 2 let me just explain it to you or 2 is to 3 for that matter right so if you go ahead and take an image with your camera let me just switch the brush let me just draw it okay so if you take image say increase the flow with a landscape orientation you will have a ratio of 3 is to 2 right normal cameras why 3 is to 2 and how does that make sense so suppose your camera has 24 megapixels so you would see when you click a picture like that your dimensions are 6000 pixels by 4000 pixels now what are these 3 into 2 right if you reduce it it's 3 into 2 it's 3 multiplied by 2000 which is 6000 and 2 multiplied by 2000 which is 6000 and that's how that works if you click an image like this that would be 3 would be here 2 would be here no matter how many megapixels it is if it's 64 megapixels you can make the calculations that way but the aspect ratio remains the same okay so you're going to create a rectangle choose the rectangular tool click here once and it will ask you the width and the height and you can put any width just make sure the ratio is being followed so width would be say 2 into 200 or height would be 300 pixels right click OK now that is small right we can make it big and we can keep the aspect ratio maintained so select the move tool press controller command T and hold the shift right if you hold the shift what does it do it maintains the proportions right and if you hold the alt key or the option key with the shift key it makes it larger from the center so if I just hold the shift key it will make it larger if I hold the alt key along with it okay shift and all together and make it larger it will make it larger from the center okay so this looks right okay so this would be in the image we can place it in the center and if you want to center it on this page it's really simple select the rectangular marquee tool make a selection till this okay just make a selection and make sure this layer is selected select the move tool and then click on this center button and it is centered right now once you've got the right size again you can also center uh, center it from top and bottom by making the complete selection controller command a and then center it this way it's already centered pretty much nice now you can color it gray by just double clicking on the thumbnail and select color any one that you want I'm going to choose gray because it's indicative of that area being empty you can choose any color doesn't matter it's going to be replaced by an image and let's add a white border so how do we add a white border now you might think okay let's make a copy of the rectangle and just bring it down and maybe color that white and make it larger control command T and make it larger this adds a white border 
No, that's the wrong way to do it. You know why? Because that kills the aspect ratio. Look, this is thin, this is thick. We need it to be uniform. That kills the aspect ratio. That's the wrong way to do it, okay, in this case. So here's what you need to do. You were right, make a copy of it, okay? Now, you can fill it, fill it with white if you want. You can fill it with nothing if you want. So let's fill it with white, just to be sure. Okay, filled it with white. Now, we need to add some stroke so that the borders that we add are uniform. So to add a stroke, select the rectangle tool and here you have a lot of options. So for stroke, we're gonna choose white again. So click on it and you just can click on it and choose white or you can just click on this one. Pretty much good. And make sure the stroke is on the outside. So click here, click on more options and make sure align set to outside, caps, but, motor, whatever that is, it's good. Click OK and just keep on increasing it. Once you're satisfied, just stop. This is okay. So suppose you like, say, 75 pixels. That's fine for you. And once you select that, once you're happy with that, you can move that back just under the gray one. And there you have it. So now let's add some more placements. And once you have added this placement, just select this. And by the way, if you want the guides to snap to a particular kind of shape or image, just select that layer. And then when you drag in the guides, see how it snaps very nicely with the image with that rectangle, right? Just, it will snap with that. If you want the guides to snap with something else, just select that layer and just bring in the guides. Okay, now we wanna add some placements right here. And this ones would be, say you wanna add some placements in the ratio of 16 is to nine. So if you would simply go 1600 by 900, click okay, that's fine. And you can make it as big as you want, if you want. So control command T, make it bigger, just like this. And make a copy of it, okay? And by the way, I just forgot to tell you how to make a copy of it. Hold the Alt or Option, and just click and drag and leave. Therefore, you have a copy. Now you have two placements right there. Now, here's the thing. If you want the space, if you want to be super design specific, if you want the space between these two to be equalized with the space of this, here's what you need to do. Simple. Drag a guide and make sure it's on the center. Okay, it's in the center. Now, select the rectangular marquee tool. Now this is a super complex thing guys, you can skip it. And hold the shift key and just make a square, just like this. This is just a simple trick, okay? This doesn't matter. Now, drag the square right here and make sure the square is in the center of this guide. It will snap automatically, okay? Now, once the square is there, and since it is a selection, create two more guides, right? And then press controller command D. We don't need this square anymore. And we don't need this guide anymore. Select the move tool and just delete this guide. D delete a guide, it's simple. Just drag it all the way up and it's gone. Now you need to make sure that your placements are within this. So now it's very simple. Select any of the one rectangle, delete one. Let's delete the top one. Select any one of this and press controller command T. Now, if you want to make the rectangle smaller from this point, so drag the anchor point right here and then make it smaller by holding shift and alt, okay? Now make it bigger and just when it reaches this guide, stop, hit enter, right? Now, why did we move the anchor point there? Here's why we moved it. If the anchor point was say here and we held shift and alt, it would become smaller and bigger from that point. And we didn't want it to exceed this point and that's why we put it that way. Okay, let's go back, control command T, drag the anchor point, place it here and shift and alt, just drag it to this and that's pretty much good. Now make a copy of this, it will fit right in just like that. Isn't that beautiful? Now you have two placements right here. And you can also place some background images if you want. So I have an image. Let's open up the folder. I have an image, say this one. Let's open this up in Photoshop, just here. Let's unlock the background layer. You can unlock the background layer by simply clicking on the lock. And you're good. Now let's make a quick selection of this. You can take your time as much as you want. Let's make a quick selection of this. Let us make the selection of the sky and then we'll just invert it because that's much more easier. So, and by the way, we chose the quick selection tool. Right click on it, choose the quick selection tool. If you cannot see it, if you can see it, just directly click on it. 
and make a selection of the sky. This did a pretty good job and everything that you see will be available for download. Check the links in the description. Okay. And make a selection of this and that's all. Now let's inverse the selection. How do we inverse the selection? Control Shift I. Command Shift I if you're using a Mac. If you cannot remember the shortcut, you can go to select and then inverse. Just click on this. And now we have inverted the selection. All you have, all you have to do, just click on the mask button and you're good. This is done. Now you can copy this, click and drag and just place on this one. Now it's already there and you can make it as big as you want. Now you could have just applied the mask, but I didn't want to apply it. You can apply the mask. You can just right click on the mask and then apply layer mask. So layer mask, layer mask goes away and this deletes the background image and control command T and you can make it as big as you want, just like this, probably like this and you can take it back. Okay. Drag it and take it back. Just above this. And this is fine. If you wanted something like this, make it a little smaller like that and maybe decrease the opacity. You can also place it right here, depending upon your taste, whatever you want. I would place it here just like this and maybe I'll decrease the opacity just like this. Okay. 40 is good. And your images are ready to come before your images are ready. Make sure everything, every placement you have, put it inside a group, select the bottom most placement layer, hold the shift, select the top most placement layer, press control or command G. Now inside of this, you can name this placement one, P1, P2, P3, whatever you want. And then what you can do, let's name it P1. Okay. I, why did I name it PY? P1. Okay. P2. Let's name it P3. Actually, this is P3, right? P3. This is P2. You can name it anything you want. I'm just having fun. P1. And put it inside of separate groups, single layers inside of separate groups. Why? This will make sense later. Okay. Select this one, press Ctrl command G and you can name it P1, Ctrl command G, Ctrl command G. Okay. You can name it right three, two, one. Okay. Right. Now this is done. You can name this group placements and you're good to go. You can save this as a PSD. Now your images are ready to come. So I'm going to go open the folder again and select this layer, by the way, just for the first placement, let's open up, select this and then open up the folder where your images are. And I'm going to import this image, just drag it and drop it inside of Photoshop just above this. Okay. Now this will import like that just above this layer. You can place it anytime you, anywhere you want, just like this and hit enter. Now, all you have to do, hold the alt or option and then click on the line between this. This will create a clipping mask. And once you do that, have a look. Done. Isn't that wonderful? Now you can again press control or command T and then resize it, crop it, do whatever you want with it. And you're done. Let's zoom in and let's have a closer look at it. Have a look, right? Have a look at this. Isn't this beautiful? Now you can also skip the transformation on import. If you want, all you have to do, just go to edit preferences and then general, right? And then you have this option, skip transform when placing. Okay. Just check on that. It kind of fastens up your process. If you want that option to be there, right? Let's select some other images. Maybe we'll select this one. Just click and drag it right here. Let's see how that looks. And by the way, we forgot to select that layer and doesn't matter. Just, we'll just go ahead and place it in two. So we'll just place it in two and create a clipping mask. Alt, click on the line between this and you're good. So let's place it right there. Control command T. And that is fine, right? So that is done. Now let's do with the above image and let's minimize that and let's use this one. All the images are available for download. And before you import this image, I just forgot to tell you all you can do. You can select this layer. So placement number three, just select the placement number three, select the rectangle and then just drag it and drop it and there you go. Now, since we 
checked skip transformation, it won't open up with the transformation, right? It doesn't open up with the transformation bars and handles. So it just skips it. Now you can create a clipping mask, Alt or Option, click on the line between these two layers and boom. Actually what happens in clipping mask, we'll understand in a minute. So let's just adjust it the way we want it. There we go, just like that. Let's zoom in quite a bit. Okay, that looks nice. Now let's select this. Let's move it to the side. Now, have a look at the rectangle. Now, if we choose rectangle, this rectangle has a stroke of one pixel. So if you're looking for strokes, you can get it. So let's go ahead and increase the stroke. So this is the stroke, you can get the stroke. You can also delete the stroke if you want, just select it and just cancel it, right? We don't want any stroke. Even in this rectangle, we don't want any stroke. I just wanted to show you, if you want, you can have some stroke in that rectangle. In this rectangle too, let's go ahead and delete the stroke. Click on this and click on this cancel button. Okay, now that looks nice. So there you go, it's hot and ready for print. And by the way, if you're a drop shadow fan, you can also add some drop shadow effects to it. So uh, select the rectangle that you want, you want to add effects to. And supposedly we will add effects to all of the rectangles. So select the rectangle, just double click on the right hand side of the layer, and then we can add some drop shadow to it by checking the drop shadow. And there you go, it adds some drop shadow, not so much, but let's give it an angle, decrease the distance, and decrease the size. Just like this. If you're a drop shadow fan, you can do this. Just like this, and maybe a little more, right? And once you add drop shadow to this one, you don't have to add it to every one, every one of your images separately. All you have to do, just copy the effects, hold the Alt key, right? Click and drag it on P2, right? And we'll apply the effects on P2 and hold the Alt key or the Option key if you're using a Mac, click and drag it and drop it on P1. And actually when you add it to P1, it actually adds a drop shadow to this one, but we wanted the drop shadow to be on the boundary, right? To be on the stroke. So that's the wrong place to be. Just click and drag it here to this rectangle. There you go to this one. Okay, that looks fine. Actually it made a copy, so we would have to delete the effects from P1, so delete the effects. Okay, that looks nice. If you're a fan, I'm not a fan of drop shadows, so I'll just go back, I don't want drop shadows. So there you go, it's all ready to go. If you want strokes, you can add it. Now let me show you one other design if you're interested. So all here, next time you open this, just let's go ahead and delete all these photos. Let me show you how to save it, okay? So it's simple to save it. So just go to File, Save As, and save it as a PSD, right? Select PSD and Simple Design C. By default, the name came, and that's why I asked you to name it in the beginning, right? Now once you save it, and let's save it in Video Works. I have a folder where all my videos are stored, stored, and Simple Design. Let's save it right there, okay? So once you close it, it's saving. And once you close it, all you have to do, let's just close this, no. So I will go file, open that, file open or open recent, simple design, and it's all ready to go. P1, P2, P3, everything is ready. Just select the one, drag and drop the image, create a clipping mask, and you're good to go. Now let's understand what clipping mask is because that is important, right? Let's open up any document, and this is just for demonstration purposes. So we would go to anything, art and illustration, doesn't really matter, 100 pixel grid. Okay, now what is a clipping mask? Well. Let's create any shape or draw anything, okay? Let's create a new layer, take the brush, let's draw anything with say any color that you want, okay? Simple, I drew this. Now, create a new layer, open an image or draw something else, maybe something with green or, right? Draw something, okay. Now, if I create a clipping mask, this layer will just be limited to the boundaries of this layer, right? Okay, so if I hold the alter option, click on the line between it, watch, the green gets limited to this layer. Think of it like this, think of layer one just as a shape, okay, just like this, and layer two is rock solid, okay, it's rock solid. Now once you convert this layer two into a clipping mask, this rock solid layer transforms into sand, and it falls down, okay? Everything falls down but everything that was just above this layer stays. It falls on this layer and everything just outside this just 
falls off. Okay. And that's what a clipping mask is given that wind is not blowing. <laughs> okay. So now let's show you some other examples. I actually created one more yesterday. So let me show you that. Okay. I'm not going to create it all over again. So this is uh, one that I created. And by the way, if you want some awesome fonts, and I'm going to give you this uh, template, I'll just check the links in the description. So if you want some awesome fonts, I didn't paint it gray. I should have just click on it and paint it gray. And you get the idea. I just painted it black just for fun. I just painted it. Okay. So I was looking for some fonts and I just wanted to give you this tip. So for example, this font is one of my favorite fonts. I found yesterday. So I was looking for a serif font and the best place to look for fonts is fonts.google.com. So once you're in the website, the link is in the description. You can choose whatever font you want. Serif, sans serif, everything is free to use display. So I'm going to choose serif. Let's check all of this off. Now what is serif? Serif means that in the corners at the ends, so you have these extra decorations, these extra lines, these extra things, jewelry like things. I don't know the correct terminology, but you get the idea, right? Sans serif, sans stands for without, okay? Without serif. So if I chose choose sans serif, see, at the ends, we don't have those embellishments. So let's choose serif. I wanted some serif. And I wanted the title to be, say, happy day, okay? How does happy day look in this font? Now you can choose apply to all fonts. Now you can just scroll down and have a look which one looks good. So I was just scrolling down. See, Libre Baskerville is looking good. So for me, just scrolling down and for me, Vidalica looks good. And one, if you want to download it, all you have to do is click on the plus button and then click on this and click on this download button. You can also customize it and select different font weights. Some fonts have a lot of weights, bold, extra bold, ultra bold. You can select all of them and click on this download button and it will be downloaded. Okay. So similarly, if you look back and look into this design, if you want to import a photo. And by the way, if you are wondering how did I do this, this border thing, I just drew a rectangle, turned off the fill and turned on the border. Let me show you, you will get confused. Okay. So this was the rectangle that I drew. So let me just bring it back to normal. So this was it. And I added a stroke and clicked on the fill and clicked on the cancel. And that's all there is. So suppose you want to import an image. I'll select this rectangle right here and there. I'll select whatever image that I want to import. So this one, I'll go ahead and drag and drop it here. That's fine. That will be imported. And then Alt click, right? Click on the line be between this, these two less, and then Control Command T, T for tiger or tigress. And let's make it a little bigger. There we go. And we can add little images here and there and you get the idea. And that's how you can create some awesome album templates in Photoshop just by using the simple concept of clipping mask. And by the way, don't forget to download this template links in the description reminding you again. And also just a quick recap. First off, determine what the dimensions of your album are. If you're printing it, what's the dimension? If it's online, you can also uh, give the dimensions by pixels, right? And just double up the width if it's two-sided. If you're designing two-sided designs, double up the width. And do not fear to place images in the center, okay? You can also do something like this. This is not a part of the template, but you can also do something like this. For example, if you want to place an image in the center, that's also fine. Let's just go ahead and turn this off. You can also do something like this and place the text right here. You, you could have done that and it folds from the center. So what? Advertisements do that. You can also do that. Don't be afraid to do that. Okay. So just double up the width and you're good to go. And after that, you can create rectangles. You can also create circles if you want. So let me just quickly show you what that actually means. So you, you could have also created some circles or ellipses with the ellipse tool. You can just create something like this. And then you could have just here and just cancel. To cancel the clipping mask, hold the Alt key, click on it right here. And there, select this clipping mask. You can also create something like this if you're interested. So it doesn't limit to rectangles. Okay. So create those shapes and then hold the alter option. Click on the line between both of those layers and you're good to go. And then you can save it the way you want to save a template. It's very simple file, save as, save that as a PSD. And once you have added the images, once everything is ready, you can go to file, export, 
export as and you can save it that way or file save as and save the format that you want. You want to save it as JPEG or PNG, whatever your choice is. And make sure you choose the correct color profile. If it's printing, CMYK. If it's online, RGB. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Ah!